Hello everyone, this is Chris from Cryware, and today I'm bringing you episode 2 of our PC gaming hardware myths debunk. This episode today is quite special to me. It marks the beginning of our collaboration with my good friends over at Magnetron. They have one of the best PC configurators in development and some of the most elaborate and easy to understand videos explaining the essentials of computers. Currently it's only in Danish, but we are in unison working on creating an English site for all of you out there. That said, let's get debunking. They say if they say if we'll only avoid, avoid any confrontation with the enemy, he'll forget his evil ways and learn to love them. When talking CPU in a system, a lot of people are under the impression that the bigger the CPU and the more cores and threads it has, the better it is for gaming. Now, before we dive in to the benchmarks and the charts and graphs and all that stuff, I want to make sure that we all know what a CPU actually is and what it actually does. In short, it's the brain of the computer. Every single task you perform on the PC goes through the CPU and is executed out to what you see. Depending on what type of CPU it is, you have a variety of different core counts, also called threads. Some CPUs only have physical cores and others have physical and virtual cores. A virtual core in essence is a little subcore to the main core that helps speed up the process of whatever it is you're doing. This week, we're gonna be looking at the i3, i5, and i7 of the sixth generation Intel lineup. They're respectively two cores with two virtual cores, four physical cores and no virtual cores, and four cores and an extra four virtual cores. For a more in-depth explanation, head over to my friends at Magnetron. The link will be down there. Well, I've compiled some charts and graphs, and hopefully by the end of this episode, we will all be a little bit wiser on this topic. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on two different areas, gaming and encoding slash rendering, starting off with the latter. When rendering, the saying is true, the more cores the better. The first graph we have the entire 6th generation lineup side by side in a virtual test called Cinebench. This is to show the respective performance increase when moving up the ladder. The i3 is gradually becoming faster with increased clock speeds and the i5s with their 4 cores being faster than the dual cores and again increasing with the increased clock speed. Finally with the i7s, they have hyper threading and are true quad cores which gives them 8 threads. And again with their increase in clock speed as we go from the non-K to the K version, we see the same trend as the i3s and the i5s. So how does this translate to something relatable? The next graph is a Sony Vegas render test. The same file is exported on all 9 chips and we see the exact same trend as we did in the Cinebench test. We see the i3s taking the longest, slowly becoming quicker with increased clock speeds, as well with the i5s and once again the i7s being the quickest. Now you might be thinking, Chris, didn't you just prove the statement that you're trying to debunk? Yes I did. However, this is only true for tasks that can take advantage of X amount of cores. The story is quite different when we talk about gaming. We started out with one of the most popular titles on the market right now, CSGO. In our tests, we very quickly discovered that CSGO pretty much only needs an i3, and that the game favors a higher clock speed rather than physical cores. As we can see, the i3-6100 outperforms the i5-6400 and is neck and neck with the similarly clocked 6500. Moving on to Ark Survival, another very popular game right now. We also saw that the game simply did not care for the more expensive chips, so we stopped after seeing no utilization gain when moving from an i3 to an i5, because we didn't want to bore you to death. So what does this prove? It just proves that if you want to get into gaming, you do not need to go out and buy yourself a big high-end CPU, and if CSGO is the only game that you want to play, you're better off saving the cash from an i5-6400 and getting a 6100 and a lightning fast SSD. Oh, and for all of you saying that you can't play GTA 5 on an i3, yes, yes you can, and even at 4K. That's all from me this week guys, I really hope you enjoyed this episode of PC Gaming Hardware Myths Debunked. If you did, make sure to leave a like, a comment, and even head over to my friends at Magnetron. All your support is always appreciated, I'll see y'all next time, adios.